Joining me now is Thomas Frank, author of a book called What's the Matter with Kansas? How Conservatives Won the Heart of America. It's getting a lot of attention, not just in the political community, but around the country as well. You grew up in the heartland as a kind of uh, Pledge of Allegiance taking, saluting, Boy Scout, yeah, young me. Republican, right? <laughs> that's, that, is, that is correct, sir. And what happened to you? Isn't it funny? What, yeah, what did, where did I go wrong? Well, um, I mean, that's a, that's a very long story, how I myself went from being you know, uh, 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 a teenage conservative to being what I am today, which is a liberal. Uh, and, but, the, but the real, the trajectory that you usually see in American life these days, anyway, is the other way around, like Zell Miller last night, right? Going from, uh, going from being on a Democrat to being a conservative. This is a sort of classic trajectory, right? Ronald Reagan, all those people in the 1960s changing sides that way. I went, I went the other direction just because I'm a perverse, you know, person, I guess. Let me ask you a question. You've been studying both parties. On a scale of 1 to 10, Democrats and Republicans on strategy and getting their message out, Republicans for a scale 1 to 10. You mean, are they good at it? The yeah. Re 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 Republicans Re Re tend Re to be very good at it, but you got to remember that what the message is and then what they plan to do are two very different things. Uh, I think that Republicans are far better than Democrats in terms of uh, in terms of raw basic political strategy. I also think they're much better than Democrats at getting things done, at, at, at achieving their goals. Um, but that doesn't mean I'm going to vote for them. And what about Democrats? I think they have a lot of problem problems uh, deciding who they are uh, and figuring out their own identity. They're they're very confused about it. They've been confused for quite some time. You write about Kansas and the poor counties in Kansas where people are just above the poverty line or in some cases below it, and yet they're rock rib Republicans because they're at ease with the cultural values of this president and that party. Right, the culture wars. And, you know, when we're talking about the great shift in, you know, so many people in America from left to right, from Democrat to Republican in the last 30 years, that's ultimately what it comes back to. It always comes back to the culture wars. And this is what you're going to, I mean, they're, they're not talking too much about that on the, on the floor of the convention here, but this is, if you go to any of the parties happening around town in Manhattan, that's, culture wars is what this campaign is about. But why should those people in Kansas like the Republican Party if they feel it's going to deliver more security for their family and community and is going to endorse the same values that they believe in six days a week and then reaffirm on Sunday mornings when they're in church? Well, you know, they should, of course, obviously, if the party is going to deliver those things, but, you know, fact is, it doesn't. Uh, the Republican Party is the business party. Uh, it's picked up culture war as a, you know, as a, as a way of roping in voters, but a lot of the cultural issues that they choose to fight on are impossible to win. For example, we had a, a fight in Kansas over evolution. Uh, this is, you know, they can, they can fight about this until, you know, until the cows come home, and it's not going to change the way biology is taught in America, and it's not, you know, it's not going to, it's not going to change very much. Or the fight over, uh, the fight over prayer in the schools. This is, this is, this is a, you know, this is, this is not a winning sort of thing. Now, the other hand, the, the, the Democrats ought to be out there telling them why they should be voting for Democrats. They should be making the case that Democrats are better for working class people. But they don't, they don't really make that case so much anymore. Thomas Frank, author of What's the Matter with Kansas? How the Conservatives won the heart of the heartland in many ways. We're joined now by presidential historian Doris Kearns Goodwin, who joins us from Boston. Doris, you've been listening to all of this. What do you think of Mr. Frank's thesis? Well, I think he's right in saying that the Democrats have got to figure out better how to make it us versus them. They did pretty well in the old days when Roosevelt could talk about the people versus the economic royalists. But somehow they focus group things so much nowadays that it seemed like they're on the defensive. It's incredible when you think about it. I mean, George Bush, given the polls that show lots of difficulties with Iraq, He's the one with certainty. He's the one who a best offense is a, the best offense is the answer to a bad defense. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've been sitting up there in Boston and watching the Republican National Convention play out here in Madison Square Garden. What's your uh, overall impression? Well, I think what they did quite effectively was in the first day they made Republicans proud to be Republicans again. I think that's what Schwarzenegger did. For any of them that were worrying that there has been a lot of criticism of Bush and the party, they said, we are Republicans because X, Y, and Z. And then, of course, they've taken down Kerry in a way that the Democrats didn't want to take down Bush. I think the focus group said you're not supposed to do negative things to the Democrats. They didn't even want to talk about the problems with Iraq, took some of those things out of the convention speeches. But the Republicans were certainly not afraid. They somehow are able to just assert that things are good, even when things are much more complex. 
if people are concerned whether Iraq really was part of the war on terror, they just say it is part of the war on terror. If people don't think it's gone too well, they say it has to go the way it is. And in a campaign, slogans sometimes trump co complexities and nuances. You're a student not only of the presidency but of presidential campaigns. John Kerry vowed that he would not repeat the mistakes of Michael Dukakis, who had a huge lead, 17 points coming out of Atlanta in 1988, and then squandered it. As you watch John Kerry's response to the attacks on him, is he Dukakis all over again? Well, I think he certainly waited too long to attack the Swift Boat ads because they really terribly were nasty. There was lots of untruth and a lot of them, as the newspapers have pointed out and the television has, but he's the one who has to take that message to the voters. He's doing it now, but you lose that incredible momentum. I think even more troubling, the whole convention up here in Boston was an attempt to not have Kerry look like Dukakis as a Massachusetts liberal. And to go back to what Thomas said, that's the problem. If the Democrats are not willing to say what we are, simply what we're not, then they don't have that fervor to get people to go on their side. All right, Doris Kearns Goodwin, thank you very much for joining us from Boston. And Thomas Frank has been with us as well. We want to remind you that you can watch continuous coverage of the final night of the 2004 Republican National Convention all night here on MSNBC. I'll see you tonight on NBC Nightly News. More of my exclusive interview with First Lady Laura Bush as she talks about Bush the 41st, the former president, and how he was hurt when he read that his son was going to go back into Iraq to finish the unfinished business of 1991. All that and more tonight on Nightly News, but for now, that's all for Brokaw in New York. convention after hours joe scarborough ron reagan and their guests wrap up the day's events and take your calls Why don't we go to the phone after hours midnight only on msnbc run with the